Well, it's interesting because Biden has not spent as much time here as some of the other leading candidates. You know, in the recent months, he's been out campaigned by folks like Mayor, you know, South, former South Bend Mayor Pete Buttigieg, um, Senator Sanders, uh, Senator Warren. So it's interesting. He he just hasn't spent as much time here. Some of them, he hasn't put the resources in the state. So last week, right after I week, he said, "Okay, New Hampshire, help me come back." Then almost, you know what? A few days later, he started lowering those expectations a little bit. So it's not clear really what they're expecting out of New Hampshire. Uh, he's trying to say because there's that neighboring, neighboring advantage from Senator Sanders and Senator Warren from Massachusetts, and Vermont, that you know it's going to be hard to do well here. But if somebody like South, you know, like Mayor Buttigieg as well, or Senator Klobuchar, the expectations sort of gets thrown out the window. The point that Biden has continued to make is, you know, look at the first four as one set. You know, look, look, you know. You can't just say Iowa and New Hampshire. You have to look at Nevada. You have to look at South Carolina. So you seem to be having the expectation of look at that as one separate game and then go from there. Um, but that's going to be, I think, going to be tough for voters if they see, you know, fourth place finish in Iowa, maybe a sluggish finish here. How does that show that you are the most electable candidate, which is what Biden's heart and center, you know, this campaign has been. I'm electable. I can beat Trump. What happens when you're losing to Buttigieg or Sanders in some states or even if you lose to Buttigieg or maybe Klobuchar here? I mean, obviously, in these last few days, you have a lot of political tourists coming to New Hampshire. You know, you have folks from Massachusetts and other places. Um, so crowd size can be a somewhat wonky indicator in the last few days. But it just sh just show enthusiasm. And again, you know, people vote in Massachusetts at some point, you know, in the primary process, too. So it's interesting when you see these candidates with, you know, who came into this race with lesser name ID, less organization. And now, the, you know, they're having larger events than the former vice president of the United States. Well, it's interesting. I mean, you know, obviously Iowa and New Hampshire are overwhelmingly white states. And, you know, you, I talked to voters here saying you know, maybe New Hampshire does not deserve that privilege because it doesn't reflect the diversity of the Democratic Party. Though you look at those first two states, when candidates do well and they win them, they tend to, they tend to have a, a fast track to the nomination in some cases. So for Senator Sanders, if he comes out and, he, you know, obviously the result in Iowa, he comes out and does well here, he has that big base here. And that, that's only going to build momentum as he goes into Nevada and South Carolina. When you look at Iowa, uh, with that result, um, obviously above Klobuchar and Biden, who've, who've really tried to make that centrist, moderate lane key to them. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're if you look at the, you know, obviously to the left, you have Sen Senator Sanders, Senator Warren. Pete has become that, you know, that moderate candidate that, that voters seem both excited about, and they say is more centrist than, the, than his fellow rivals.